Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at some basic beginner tips when you're brand new to Procreate and you just want to jump straight into the app. Go into settings on your iPad and go down to Procreate where you have it installed. And there's some general settings here that you can either turn off or turn on and just play around with before you actually dive into the app. The first thing to do is to allow the photos to be accessed. Secondly then, we want the camera to be enabled to make sure that that is there for when we take photographs within the app. Siri, if you wish. And then document storage. And document storage means you can save it on directly on your iPad. I've got that selected myself. Or you can save it to uh, OneDrive or iCloud Drive or whatever uh, cloud service that you prefer. Um, Canvas orientation memory is good is if you want to actually keep the orientation for when you come out of the app and go back in it keeps that memory there's also a number of other uh, settings here that are quite good that if you wish to change for example uh, the preferred file format so i've got psd because i like to bring mine out to, to photoshop sometimes um, but also you have your preferred image format so you can if you wish to save more to, to, to png or tiff this is the these are the default um, exports for um, drag and drop and then we have other accessibility options here such as single touch uh, gestures color description feedback sounds and tap assistance uh, personally i don't use any of those i only really use the uh, simplified undos and the canvas orientation memory now going back to the app when you go in you're greeted with really a kind of a gallery and in this case mine is full but you'll be seen in a blank gallery and you'll be asked to create a new artboard. So you hit the plus and you pick from one of the screen sizes available. There'll be default screen sizes applied in such as A4, 4K and square, but you might want to create your own canvas size. So it's really easy to do, just put in your width, height, uh, the DPI, and you can also then check your color profiles. If you want to add in any specific color profiles, professionally from CMYK and also RGB spectrum. And then we have our time-lapse settings. Just check that they're on a quality that doesn't use up too much of your memory. Give stacks a go. Stacks are like a folder system for Procreate. Not very obvious straight off the bat, but if you look for this kind of uh, visual where you can see multiple images stacked up on each other, hence the name, um, it will be a folder. And in there, there are multiple images so to create a stack what you want to do is grab an artwork let's say this one here and move it across to another artwork that you think is going to be in a similar stack or it's going to be a similar kind of uh, image that's going to go there and um, let's just say this one and this one hover over it and drop it down and what that has done then is created a stack you can see that it's put one of the images below it. If I click in on it, you can see we've got the stack there. And you can go back out and you can rename the stack. And that's it. And it's a nice way of organizing uh, certain projects and things like that. So for example, here, I was working on a specific project and I could easily just put in the artwork as I was working on it and select and work from there. And the next place you wanna to go to before you really start any drawing is go into the spanner tool up here, which is also the actions. And you wanna go and check out all the preferences that you've got here by just going over the preferences. This is the next port of call. And preferences have switches in here that are very important because it'll make a big difference to your drawing within the app itself. Firstly, whether you prefer a light inf interface or a dark interface. So I'm going with the dark side and I'm going with the dark interface. I just prefer that on most of my apps anyway. Right hand interface, what that is, is the scalar of your brush size and the opacity tool over here has now switched to the right hand side because I have selected right hand interface, but I'm more used to the left hand, so I'm sticking to the left hand interface. We've got the brush cursor, if you want to use that kind of Wacom looking brush cursor kind of style. Um, we have dynamic brush scaling, so dynamic brush scaling means that it applies to your level of zoom. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm zoomed out, so my brush is keeping scaled 
to that kind of level of zoom that I'm going out. So I'm going a little bit more and it's still keeping to that level. Let me just undo by double clicking or double tapping on the on the uh, pad there. It's to undo quickly, it's to double tap. I'm gonna to go to my actions. I'm gonna put off dynamic brush scaling and this time I'm just going to draw and you can see the difference here. I scale out and I'm gonna draw and you can see that it doesn't compensate. And I draw, zoom in again, and we've got a similar thing. You can also project your canvas as well if you want to project it to uh, an AirPlay device, um, which is great if you're doing presentations or any kind of uh, on-the-spot presentation graphics. You can also connect a legacy stylus. So if you do have a Wacom and you want to connect it to your iPad, you can use the Bluetooth settings and connect it up and at least you keep that similar feel, but you're using this as kind of like a pseudo screen. Pressure and smoothing is very important as well. If you pop in here, just make sure that you've got something like this in your area here for pressure and smoothing. So you want the curve to look like this. We don't want it anyway flat because that will result in a, a less fluid and less natural stroke. So currently this pressure that I've got going on, I'm really happy with. The response is really good. But if I go back in, let me undo that by double tapping. And we'll go back in here, bring that up, and I'll bring this one down like that. So you can see the drop off there. It's a, it's, it's a really, really, really light start. And it's almost like it doesn't start going until I make a curve, you know? So it's following that uh, distinct pattern that I've made there in the pressure and smoothing pane. So I'm gonna bring that back to roughly where it was. I'm actually gonna go a little bit deeper now on this, this one here, um, corner to corner. So that kind of base is normally what I go with there. Stabilization then, if you bring that to the max, you'll see what happens to your pen as you go through. It goes kind of a bit crazy and it, ha it follows this really stable flow, like so. Um, now, if you wish to do something very specific art-based, this might be a nice gesture for you to put in. So we'll go back in, I'm going to turn that off. Or we'll not turn it off, put it back down to where it was. Maybe bring it up a smidge more, let's just see. Yeah, it's not too bad, maybe maybe bring it up to... Um, try 35 this time. So there's a bit of control, but I also have the freedom then still. So undo, double tapping. Great, go back to the wrench. And back to pressure and smoothing. This time we're gonna look at motion filtering. Put that to 100. Um, it's clicked on tip attachment. I don't have a tip attachment. I've never really used one. Um, I'm actually curious to see what they're like. So, but you can see instantly what's going on with this. I'm getting huge lag because I dragged this up, but the control has just gotten ridiculously straight and architectural. So you want to keep that down very low. I'm going to keep that off. Okay. Go back out. Undo. Back into pressure and smoothing again. We're going to look at motion filtering expression. Same thing. Put it up to the max. This one doesn't really do too much when you bring it up to the max for what I've got. It's actually quite satisfying. Um, so we're going to bring it down to about 40% odd. Still looks good. I'm actually going to keep that. So I'm constantly updating and evolving at this section of the um, of the app. Anyway, going into the the settings, uh, gesture controls as well. This is this is a very important area here because this is where you control everything that you do within Procreate itself, um, and that's everything from the general stuff such as disable touch actions. This is an essential one to put on if you don't want your other digits interfering with the canvas, I'd highly recommend putting that one on. Disable undo and redo. So this means that the two finger and three finger tap will not undo or redo your, your, um, your drawing. Rotate with pinch zoom. So that's pinch zoom gesture will also allow rotation. So as you zoom in, you can rotate. Very handy, put that one on I suggest. Uh, and then we have the enable 3D painting with, painting with finger. Um, that's optional, I don't use the 3D painting too much, but um, 
if you want to, you can do it and use it with the finger as you go through it. Um, the other options then we have the smudge control. So a finger will always smudge. This is handy if you're really that kind of artist who likes to kind of draw and get in then with the fingers. Erase then, same thing. You have the option to erase with the touch of your finger um, uh, or erase with the Apple Pencil. Assisted drawing. Um, you have multiple options here for assisting drawing, such as you can uh, tap the eyedropper as well. I've got to set to tap and I've also got to set to tap and touch. Then we have the likes of full screen. So with full screen, you have things like a finger touch will toggle full screen if you want for one touch. Three finger swipe, swiping down with three fingers will toggle one screen. For example, I've got full screen. I've got that set to three fingers down will bring up copy paste etc. Uh, four finger tap is the one that I've got set for tapping with four fingers will toggle full screen and automatic full screen then uh, the interface will return after the set delay. So you set a delay of what you want. I've got mine to 0.66 seconds. So if you just want a little bit of clarity you can hit with the four fingers and it goes between. So in, in gesture and controls we also have clear layer. So in this one here what well, we have a scrub, three finger swipe, four finger tap, touch and hold. They all do different things to clear the layer. What I like to use is touch and hold. So holding a finger on the canvas will delete the layer. Um, and that would be a case of going to here, holding a finger and a delete. Clears the layer. Another tip for when you're in an actual canvas and you create a blank canvas, to simply move that canvas around, you can just twist the canvas to flip like that. And as you're pinching and expanding like that with your fingers, it's really just zoom in and zoom out. So that's how we zoom in and zoom out in Procreate. It's very simple, quite satisfying, and you can flip it around like that. Also, if you're in the different orientation of your canvas original orientation, if you just get your two fingers and do a quick flick, it flips the canvas in one smooth go like that. So after you've gone into your preferences, that's the first port of call, you should then start jumping into the canvas and just playing around with initial uh, brush brushes and uh, just seeing what one suits you. This is Syrup Brush, it's my favorite brush by far, I love it. I use it in probably most of my illustrations, if not all. Um, but there are hundreds of brush brushes to choose from in the default setting here. And you can also import um, special brushes then that you can purchase uh, from, from other artists, which is great. Thanks very much for watching this very quick uh, beginner's guide and talk to you soon. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell to keep updated with any new videos and tutorials, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks very much.